Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we are going to continue with my previous video that showed you how to quickly add and delete game objects. I'm going to continue to build on top of this project in the future, adding in more and more functionality in order to better understand the type of scripts that we can create for Unity. I will be sure to try and link to previous videos in this tutorial series just in case you miss some functionality along the way. Also this video series is going to be added under our Unity Scripting Madness playlist. So just in case you want to watch all of these in order or if you are looking to see some other videos within that playlist. Now the first thing I want to point out is that I have actually updated this scene or this project a little bit. Initially I didn't have any uh, folder organization going on so I just came in and added in four really quick folders and if you don't know how to do that all you have to do is right click create folder and it will create a folder and you can just give it a name. So I've got four basic folders here, a materials folder, a prefabs folder, a scenes folder, and a scripts folder. I like to have everything in folders just to add a little more organization to the project. Now what I'm going to do is actually go through and show you where we left off at. So the last time we were working within this project we just had a really very simple scene. It's very static and if we left click we are creating objects and they uh, have rigid bodies on them so they're reacting with forces and falling and moving around and we also have timers on them so they'll be destroyed after a certain amount of time and if they hit a hidden collider uh, about 10 um, units below this platform then they'll be destroyed as well. So this is actually kind of a pretty boring scene we've got going on right now but I want to start adding in some more dynamic movement and you know some fun things that we can just sort of showcase our, our skills in Unity. So for this video, I'm actually going to create a script that orbits the camera around a given point and makes the camera focus on a target point. So we're going to be spending a lot of our time within our code editor here. I'm going to try to make sure that uh, it's large enough for everyone to see. But the first thing we need to do is actually create our new script. So let's go inside of our scripts folder here and we're just going to right click create C sharp script and I'm just going to call this script orbit. Now let's go ahead and open up our orbit script. Let me drag it over here, full screen it. Now hopefully that's large enough for everyone to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm actually going to do is get rid of my start function here. We don't actually need it for this script, but we are going to need several public and private variables up at the top. So let's go ahead and get started on those. We're going to need a public float x spread. And that's going to be the distance that we want to move on the x-axis. So if you think about the center point, right, that we're going to be orbiting around, and then you think of the spread along the x, that's how far away we can move in either the left or right directions from our center point. So if I say that our center point is at 0 on the x and we have an x spread of 5, then we will be able to move to plus 5 in the x and minus 5 in the x. Now in order to form a circle though, we actually have to move in the x and the z. So the next variable we're going to need is a public float z spread. And this does the exact same thing as the x spread except it's on the z. So now we can move say for example 5 forward and 5 behind the center point as well. We're also going to need a public float for our y offset and our y offset is basically basically going to be static and it's going to just give us a way to have the camera above or below our center point so that way we can be looking down at our center point or up at our center point okay we are going to need a center point reference so let's say public transform center point it's actually just center point Okay, and we're going to need a rotation speed, right? We want to be able to adjust the speed at which we move or orbit around our center point. So we're going to say public float rot speed. And we're going to do finally our last public here is going to be a public bowl. And it's going to be rotate clockwise. And this is going to change the, ro the direction in which we orbit. So we can or orbit in either a clockwise or a counterclockwise motion. So either from left to right or from right to left. Okay, so that's going to do it for our public variables. We do need one more variable though, but it can be private. And we're just going to do a private float timer and set it equal to zero. 
Now that should do it. And our timer is actually going to be always incrementing and it's going to be what we use inside of uh, some functions to actually update our position. Now before I write out my update function, I actually want to create another method first and it's going to be a method that basically updates our movement. And I want to do this in a method because it's a little easier to maintain and it's really easy to call a method from the update function. So let's go ahead and actually write this method out. Let me add a few spaces underneath here so that way I've got plenty of room to work. And we're going to create our new method. We're just going to call it avoid rotate. We don't need any parameters. Now the first thing we want to do inside of this update method is actually an if check. And we're going to check whether we want to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So all we have to do here is say if rotate clockwise, then we're going to do something else. I don't know why that did that. Interesting. Else we're going to not rotate clockwise. Let's actually move these curly braces down here. It's not very pretty, is it? Uh, let's do it the way we had it. Okay, hopefully that's readable. Just trying to make it as legible as possible. Okay, now we have to do a couple of things inside of our rotate clockwise, namely getting a new position for both the, the X and the Z. So what we're gonna do here is say float X. So we're creating a new uh, float variable and we're gonna set that equal to negative math dot F dot cosine capital C and we're gonna pass timer and we're gonna multiply that by X spread here so basically all we're doing is we're getting a new float that is the equivalent of a minus cosine function passing in our time and we're multiplying that by the X spread variable now the cosine and sine functions are both wave functions and basically what that means is that we can have these sort of repeating forever as long as we're passing in this time here so this will repeat infinitely and so the next thing we actually want to do is get a float z as well we're going to set this equal to math f dot sine and we're going to pass in our timer multiply this by z spread and now we're going to so basically what this is doing is this is getting us a new z and a new x every time update is called. And we actually want to create a new vector three as well. So we're going to say vector three pause is equal to a new vector three. And we're going to pass in our X, our Y offset and our Z. Now, as you can imagine, just setting it to a new vector three, that isn't going to do anything. So we actually want to update our tra transform. Whoops transform dot position and we're going to set our transform dot position equal to the position plus the center point dot position okay so this is basically going to rotate us or orbit around the center position in a clockwise motion and I'm not going to go into all of the math associated with this in this tutorial. If we get enough requests for that, then I can certainly dive into the math that actually makes this work. But for right now, I think it's important that we just sort of create the scripts and you guys can see what this actually does. So let's go ahead and we're going to now write out our else function. So now we want to actually just have it rotate counterclockwise. So again, we're going to actually, let's just go ahead and copy the rotate clockwise since it's pretty much the same thing. All we're going to have to do here is actually remove the minus from the cosine call or the mathf.cosine. And just removing that means that now we will be moving counterclockwise. Just wait till you see it. It'll be really cool. Okay. So now inside of our update function, we have to do three things. We're going to set it, to, we're going to incre increment our timer. So if we just do timer plus equals time dot delta time get used to using delta time and just really remember that because you're going to be using it a lot and we're going to multiply that by our rotation speed the next thing we want to actually do is call our rotate and it's really important that we increment our timer before we call the rotate function because if you don't increment the timer first then you may get some jitter occurring 
All right, now that we have that, we wanna do one final thing, and it's a specific call. It's a very specific call. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the transform of our camera look at a center point. And all we have to do in order to achieve that is say transform.look at center point. Okay, very cool, very easy. And that does it for our script. That's really all it takes to get an object orbiting. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back out to Unity console. We don't have any errors. Very cool, as we can see everything was pulled in. Let's go to our main camera now and let's add our orbit script. Now, I actually already know the dimensions of this cube here, but I'm gonna click on it and show it to you anyways. And as you can see, uh, the dimensions are 10, uh, 0.2 and 10, but we really only care about the X and the Z dimensions here. So on our main camera, if we were to set our X spread to 10 and our Z spread to 10, then I know it's going to cover the dimensions of our plane. The next thing I want to do is actually set a Y offset. And if you look up here at our camera, we did position it in the last tutorial to 3.5, which seems to be a pretty good value actually. It looks like it's got a pretty good uh, positioning going on. So in our script, we could have said this dot transform dot position dot Y, but I'm actually just gonna go ahead and set it again. And I'm gonna set it to 3.5 here, or if you wanted to, you could set it to five, something like that. But I'm just gonna test it out at 3.5 and see how it does. The next thing we're gonna need is actually our center point. And for our center point, I'm just gonna drag in this cube or this white platform that we have here. So it's going to always be looking, looking at that center platform. Now, we have two more variables to set and I'm actually gonna leave rotate clockwise unset for now because we can just very quickly check that during play and you'll see it actually changing directions. But we, we do need to set a rotation speed and I like a rotation speed of about 0.5 for this. Um, just because, and you'll see this, it actually is pretty quick when we're rotating, rotating around. And I don't want it to be super fast, you know, just rotating really, really quickly because that can be a little disorienting, disorienting for the user. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out. Let's press the play button here. Okay, cool. So it's working. As we can see, we are actually rotating or orbiting this platform and we're maintaining our eye contact, if you will, with this center platform. Now, if I click, you can see that I am in fact creating more of these objects. I'm instantiating them as we go along here. So it's just sort of, you know, this tutorial is all about making things a little prettier, you know, just making it cooler, making it a little more dynamic. And as I said earlier, if we were to up increase our Y offset, it just sort of gives us uh, a little more of a top down look. You can decrease it as well, but if you go below zero, you're, you're gonna be looking at the bottom of the platform. Now we can also rotate clockwise now and as you can see we are moving around clockwise if I go back out to my scene here see that is in the clockwise direction so this is just a really really cool fun script to play around with and it's really useful actually you can use this for all kinds of stuff I mean imagine if you're creating a game and you need a slow-mo effect where the camera comes out and orbits the player or something like that then you can easily use this script to do something like that Okay, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is what happens if we remove our X spread or our Z spread? You know, I mean, you may be thinking, well, it'll totally break, but it won't. So let's say, for example, I set my X spread to zero. Well, you may be wondering, like, what is going on now? You know, what, what's actually happening? And what's happening is we are only actually moving in the Z direction. So we're moving backwards and forwards in our Z direction. Now, I could also do that in the x direction by setting our x to 10 and our z to 0 and now we are just moving back and forth so we're lerping across this platform and you can also create ellipses doing this so if I were to have my x set at 10 and my z set to 5 well now we're gonna move in an ellipse so let me actually go up a little bit and show you so as you can see we were just there we're gonna come down and this is giving us our max movement on the Z is less than our, our max movement on our X. So we're naturally going to move in this sort of ellipse type movement, which is really cool. So this script is really, really simple, but really dynamic, which makes it really awesome. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for this. Hopefully you learned something new about this and you will be able to use this script in the future. I actually really like this script and I use it a lot myself. Now I do want to provide a quick preview of what we're going to do in our next tutorial within this series. And in our next tutorial, we're going to make this a little bit cooler. 
still by adding in the ability to instantiate different objects into our scene randomly. So right now we're just instantiating these sort of spearmint colored spheres into our scene, which is, you know, it's cool that we're just creating these spheres out of nothing, but you know, it's not as cool as it could be, you know, so we definitely want to get that going. So that's going to happen in our next video. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.